All right, well, we have some clarity. We have some clarity as far as the Toronto Blue Jays ro rotation is concerned. Thank God we weren't, thank God we're not live on streaming. Uh, it's Jeff Blair and Kevin Barker, but you just, just, you interrupted my train of thought there. It's not hard to do. Happy Friday, everybody. Yes, happy Friday, everybody, indeed. Jays and Minnesota Twins, just a couple hours away from the first pitch in the first of three games at the Rogers Center. We talked about the Jays pitching plans. We now, we now have an idea. I think, Kevin, of how this organization's thinking as it goes into the playoffs. Uh, the Jays announced today that Steven Matz will start Saturday. Jose Barrios will start Sunday. Robbie Ray gets the Monday game against the Rays. Alec Manoa gets the Tuesday game against the Rays. So Alec Manoa gets pushed back. That helps in terms of his workload a little bit. Huh. But it, it also does something else, doesn't it, Kevin? If yep. you just, if you, if you, operate under the assumption that Barrios and Ray are going to stay on routine, which we know they are, it lines Jose Barrios up to pitch that possible 163. Yeah, well, I think they were worried, too, that Barrios might have to miss his start because of the issue he was having with his, with his side. And, right. and he's, now, he's, now, Obviously, he's fine. Now, he's starting Sunday. Now they know he's healthy, but also that this is on his regular rest. That, mm -hmm. That's a big deal. He's a, he's a big routine guy and has to be – you know, every five day kind of thing, but that also lines it up. If they didn't need the extra game to get into the wild card game, guess who's pitching it? Barrios. Yeah. So it's you know it, it kills a you know. And a lot, then in the of, wild card game, Robbie Ray. Bingo. So you got your best two guys going when it matters the most, and that's that's the ultimate thing they want to do there. And it you know it it does help out Alec Manoa a little bit, and you know I, I guess the workload I, is that a big deal for him? I, I don't know. He's a he's a big man. Again, though, Kevin. Kevin, yeah, he's a big man, but you're also you're in uncharted territory with him. He hasn't. He, I mean, he hasn't pitched this much in the in the majors. Obviously, I I think you know you talked about this earlier in the week, and you you really hit on it. Uh, at least I think you really hit on it in in pinpointing or pointing out, I should say, that Barrios and Ray are both creatures. You know, they they like their, to stay in their five day routines. They are clearly. At this point in time, the two most important starters in the Blue Jays, not to take anything away from Alec Manoa, but first two games of the playoffs, you're going to see Barrios and Ray, or Ray and Barrios, however, however it works out. And um, so this whole thing, yes, there's that, that impact in Alec Manoa, but I think you're right, Kevin, more than anything else, it, it allows Barrios to... Uh, to stay on track to, to yep. pitch that to it, pitch that possible game that is, that is back to back starts for Alec Manoa too against the Tampa Bay Rays. That's right. I don't, I'm not real sure if that even matters. You know, if the if the sliders working the way it worked last time, it really doesn't matter. But I, you know, it's it's just interesting that they they also sort of line it up that way that they'd rather have him pitch and then say uh, Stephen Matz. You know, you're you're getting it sort of lined up your best arms against the other best team. Mm -hmm. That that's sort of that's sort of the way you're lining it up, and maybe you 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 know you're massaging Ryu and Matts around some starts of that nature, and you got your best guys going. It's yeah, you know, it's almost like the little bit of you you lock yourself in a room, and you figure out exactly okay who's my best two starters. Well, you got that taken care of. Now now you know that that's mm -hmm. Ray and Barrios. Yeah. Now you figure out exactly okay if we do have to have an extra game to get to the wild card game, who do we want throwing mm -hmm. that? Because remember, Robbie Ray's a creature of habit. He has to have it every five days, so he's lined up for the wild card yeah. game. He can't pitch on the fourth. So who's going to do that? So they say, okay, we'll keep hopefully Barrios on regular rest. He just so happens lines up, and we got our best two guys going when it matters the most. Yeah, and then and if you don't need Barrios that day, well, Barrios has got a little extra rest. That and and also he and can also he, he can, can pitch he can piggyback of, Robbie Ray that kind of thing and get it a little easier back to you know and and instead of using other bullpen arms to get Romano you could use Barrios to think, get to the think about think Romano of, you want to talk about different looks two different looks Robbie Ray lefty fastball slider here comes Barrios in yeah say it say it's the, say it's the Yankees a bunch of right handed hitters yep no I mean, it's, I, ain't, it's, I ain't a big fan of the slider fastball combo it makes, it well, makes an inordinate sure inordinate does. amount of sense for the Blue Jays to do that these are the lineups for tonight's game yes Josh Donaldson is in the starting lineup for the Minnesota Twins Andrelton Simmons is not with the team uh, he could not get immigration clearance to come to Toronto had nothing to do with COVID nineteen he is applying for U S citizenship and as a result. Uh, were he to leave 
the United States or any U.S. territory, uh, he would have to start the process all over again. So this is nothing to do with COVID-19. It's very much a, uh, a paper issue. So Anderton Simmons is not with the team. The lineup for the Blue Jays, George Springer's leading off in DHing. Marcus Semyon's at second, Vladdy's at first, Bo is at short, Teoscar's in right, Corey Dickerson in center, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. in left, Danny Jansen behind the plate, Jake Lamb gets the start at third base. For the Minnesota Twins, it's Byron Buxton, Jorge Polanco, Josh Donaldson, mm-hmm. Miguel Sano, Rob Ref Snyder, Luis Arreyes, Brent Rocker, Rooker, and why do I think of Rocker? Mm-hmm. Max Kepler and uh, Ryan Jeffers. And we mentioned that it'll be Hyunjin Rio in the mound tonight yeah. for the Blue Jays. Michael Pineda J- just for the Minnesota Just, just for fans to pay attention to the Blue Jays, if you're, if you're interested, and sorry about my phone going off there, but George Springer against Michael Pineda is 10 for 23 with three back leg cities and 10 RBIs. Corey Dickerson, huh? eight for 17 with two back leg cities and five RBIs. So, that little, you know, 92, 93-mile-an-hour fastball that moves occasionally and the back foot slider. Now, the slider's the thing. If you can lay off the slider, because hitters are hitting around a buck seventy and some change off his slider, so that is his best pitch. When he's got two strikes, he wants to put somebody away, righty and lefty. He's going to go to that. And, you know, I, I th- I'm thinking that these guys can have success against him because he doesn't throw as hard as he used to. You know, it, it's not – it used to be 94, 95, 96. Now it's 91, 92, 93. So – if you can lay off the slider, you can get in heater counts. You can look for that. Get it a little elevated. That's the one thing. Because he does have some sink to it occasionally, some run to it occasionally into the righty. If you can get it a little elevated, they, they should be all right. This should be exactly what the doctor ordered when it comes to see ball, hit ball kind of thing. Score some runs early and get after some people. First pitch is 7.07 at the Rogers Center. We'll be joined by Justin Morneau, former MLB first baseman. Uh, current Twins color analyst and contributor to Blue Jay Central. And Cliff Floyd will join us, no doubt, at uh, 6 o'clock. Ben Wagner joins us from the ballpark at 625 as we get you set for the first of three tonight. And uh, the Jays then go on the road. Then they've got one more homestand against the New York Yankees and the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, if you're interested in getting out to a game, go to bluejays.com. There are tickets available for the rest of the regular season. As uh, the Jays, Kevin Barker, start the day, still in the wild card spot. Um, got a little bit of help. Well, not a little bit of help. Got some Your help team. from my team. Yeah. My, well, the O's. The O's got a little bit of help from the Orioles last night. How about, wow, how about that? Yeah. How, who, who, who was, who was how thinking when it, when it was bases loaded that they were going to score and win that? Have, uh, walk it off. Now, basically, I, God love the Orioles because they've kind of gotten in the Yankees' grill all year long. And, yeah. and frankly, at the end of the year, you know, the Rays are 18-1. and one. The Rays are 18-1 and one against the Orioles. That's kind of where the East was won. Uh, kind of where sure the was. East was won. There's no question. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Orioles will take on the Red Sox tonight. And uh, where are we going here, Jeff? The Athletics have the Angels. Of course, the Athletics are still around. The Yankees have the are Guardians. taking on the Guardians. Yeah, get used to saying it. I'm, I, I know. Cleveland baseball team. Here are the wild card standings in the American League. The Jays. Percentage point, one percentage point ahead of Boston. They're 82 and 64. Boston's 83 and 65. The Yankees, half a game back. Oakland's three back. Seattle's four back. And most importantly, the Blue Jays have two games in hand on the Red Sox and one game in hand on the Yankees. So something to keep in mind as we uh, as we go down, as we go down the stretch here. 590, 590 is a text line. I threw out the question on social media. And as always, you got any comments, anything you want to talk about, I threw out the question on social media. Two weeks left. Two weeks left. Who are your two wild card teams? Doesn't have to be the Blue Jays. Doesn't have to be the Blue Jays. Tell me who you think your the two wild card teams will be in the American League. 590-590, please include your name and location. All right, Kevin, let's talk about the Red Sox and the Yankees. Let's start with the Red Sox and their pitching plans. Chris Sale goes tonight. Yeah. They've got a couple of off days. They have four off days. Four off days. That's hard to me. They got four off days. Yeah. 
if they play this right, understanding Chris Sale's been hurt. Well, no, he's, well, he's, well, he was on COVID. He, he, hasn't, on COVID, he hasn't pitched but, since the seventh. So it's a, it's a okay. big, that's a big time between right. starts. Obviously, it's the Keep, Orioles. Keeping that right. in mind, though, keeping that in mind, how do you think the Red Sox will deploy him down the stretch? With four off days, yeah. they they could, I mean, depending on how he feels, could they try to milk an extra an extra yeah, start out so. of him? Him and Nathan Evaldi, that that would be uh, if if you're looking at who they have who is their best pitchers. They're, they're two best guys that could help them get to where they ultimately want to go. Now, they only, they only have 14 games left. Right. And they have four off days, like you mentioned, sprinkled in those 14 games. So how would you, you know, figure out ways to, to maximize Chris Sale? Because you should be well-rested. Now, he, you know, he haven't pitched a lot. Now, I know COVID, and mm -hmm. depending on how serious that was for him and, how, you know, how hard it was on his body, I know he's been, you know, they built him a mound in his backyard, He's been throwing off that, I, I'd read. So, you know, it's, it, it'd be interesting to see how he looks, but you can tell when he, when he is pitching, he just, you know, he was coming out hot. Like it was, he was locating it, the, the secondary stuff. He was throwing those things for strikes. So it just interesting to see how they, they, you know, try and maximize Nathan Avaldi and Chris Sale. That, that for me, offensively, I think they're okay, right? They, they got the, their home games in, in, the, in the 14 games. They got three against the Orioles, two versus the Mets, and three versus the Yankees. And then they go on the road to end the season, three, three at the Orioles and three at the Nationals. So just, if you're interested, by the way, just the, the Red Sox have the easiest remaining schedule of any team in the majors based on opponents' win percentage. The opponents' win percentages yeah. through Wednesday. All right. It's 424. Yeah, but their bullpen hasn't been real good. Now, obviously, that their offense is, you know, I, th I think because of COVID, it was it – was, taking a little bit of hit too I, it seems like that's starting to come back a little bit so it's going to be in, just interesting to see how they use those two guys up front to maximize I, you know it's like little thing chris sale starts tonight he goes say by the fourth inning they're beating the orioles eight to one you take him out of the game like there's no question that's that's the that's how you it's more about innings than mm -hmm. it is starts for me mm -hmm. and it's same same thing with avaldi like in his next start how, how would you right if you got a big lead you take him out that that's how you're starting to maximize how you know maybe he could be an opener maybe he could he could follow up an opener it's little things to to maximize those two guys to to try and figure out how to win games because this this is you know Alex Gore said it's fun they're 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 having a lot of fun trying to figure out because all the things they've been through with COVID and they're still in this thing to try and figure out how to maximize exactly what they got and get the most out of the next 14 games to get in the playoffs. Yeah, they are. Uh, but you know, you got you you got to hand it to them uh, for the way they've they've kind of hung in here, and I think a lot of it. And I know you uh, you think that I quite often oversell the importance of the manager, but I think in this case there has to be some credit given yeah, to the manager. Yeah, uh, uh, Seattle's taking a step back. Uh, Oakland's taking a step back, which has helped yeah, this Oakland, team a lot. Yeah, Oakland is. The, they have their bullpen, their bullpen is just, just shot. It's not yeah. real good, and you know, so that that's that sort of helped out a lot. But again, I'm with you. You know, maybe maybe it's 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 us against the world kind of kind of feeling. And can I let me just throw this out because you talked about the Red Sox bullpen. Okay, mm -hmm. this is from uh, weei.com. Rob, Rob Bradford. The last six games for the Red Sox bullpen, four innings pitched, no earned runs. Seven innings pitched, one earned run. Three and a thirds, one earned run. Two innings pitched, no earned runs. Four innings pitched, no earned runs. Five and two thirds, no earned runs. 0 0.68 ERA, 26 and a third innings pitched, two earned runs. So, you know, the Red Sox bullpen, uh, well, let's put it this way. They have stepped up at a time where they've needed to step I, up. I guess, but for me, they're probably not going to make the playoffs because they're bullpen. They're going to make it because of the two starters that they got. How how do you maximize Chris Sale, Nathan Navaldi, and hopefully the offense for them? You know, you know all the people in the middle of that order because they got a real. They do have a really good lineup. They're balanced. You know, they're 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 really hard to set up. They're hard to pitch to because they're they're balanced. Look, it's you know it's it's not going to be an easy thing here. You know the. That would tell you. Well, what's the Jays have to go? Man, yeah, Jays got 16 games left. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you think they have to go? I, I mean, I 12 and four. Oh, 10, 10 and six. 11 and five. I I don't know. 
do you think the Yankees are gonna are gonna close in? I mean, the Yankees bullpen is a mess right now. They got they don't have confidence. Well, I think it's starting to come back. I thought I thought I saw yeah, they don't have confidence in Chad Green or Aroldis Chapman though. Well, they're gonna go to him. Yeah, you know, and again, it, it's it's like the Blue Jays. We yeah, talked see, about the, we talked about the Blue Jays. We talked about the the Red Sox maximizing what they got. You know, I, I, Garrett Cole ha, has the the Guardians his next start. The Reds, uh, the Red Sox, and the Rays. That would be his three starts. So you're you're looking at, you know, Jordan Montgomery. How, how's he? Uh, Corey Kluber. You know, though, there's a little bit more pressure on those two guys to go a little deeper in games because of the way the bullpen's been used. But again, it, it's just for me. That's why I'm not picking them to, to make it. They're, yeah, they're, I'm with for you. For me, they're, they're, their lineup just is, is too easy to pitch to. You know, Aaron Judge and Carlos Stanton, they're, they're having pretty good end-of-the-season runs, those two guys are, but everybody else. Like, it's, you know, you, you make a halfway decent pitch with something hard, you can get them out, which is just not the Yankee way. So that's why I think just because of the balance of the Red Sox and the 14 games and the, and the four days off, and then Chris Sale being arrested, I think for me they got a better chance of facing the Blue Jays than the Yankees do. That's just me. Five ninety, five ninety is. Tell me if the I'm crazy. Line. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, uh, you know, I, I dismissed the Yankees earlier in the year though, and you know they, they proved me wrong for a while. Yeah, because you look at the last nine games the Yankees had to play, three at Boston. Three at the Rogers Center, and three against the Rays at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, that's nine games against three really good teams. Yeah. Who two of them are trying to do exactly what you're trying to do, and one of them don't want to back into the playoffs, so they're going to give you a run at it. Shane from Hamilton wants to know the ideal opponent for the Jays in the wild card game. I like the Yankees. I like the Yankees. I too. said too, but I, I think it's going to be the Red Sox. But I just again, I think the Yankees lineup's easier to pitch to. Jeff in Halifax thinks the Jays and A's. Well, I mean, everything would have to line up for the A's. What happens if the Jays, Lawrence and Port Perry, what happens if the Jays, Sox, or Yankees finish with the same record? Then we have a one-game playoff. Yeah. And we could have two-game playoff. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why the Yankees are lining up Gary Cole to pitch in one of those extra games if he has to. If he doesn't, he's getting an extra day of rest. It's, you know, all all of these teams are trying to line it up the exact right way. Can, can we? Thinking about what we have just been talking about. Looking back now, and I want to look at the Jose Barrios trade all the time. But, Bark, if they didn't make that trade. Ryu would be pitching that game. Or Manoa. I mean, I'm okay with notice, Manoa. I'm, I'm okay. I'd rather I'm, have I'm, Barrios right now. Yeah. Do, you know, it, it's... it's I say that, especially if it's the Yankees or the Red Sox, which it probably will be. If it's one of those two teams, I like Barrios' stuff. I think he can command that. The, the, the sinker in, the slider away, that's an experience. Yeah. See, I, I like it. That's why the whole, when people uh, you know, when people were all up in arms about that deal because it cost them Austin Martin, and my response to people was the, the two players you gave up, they're not going to help the Jays this year. Or next year. Or next year. Yeah, you don't want to waste Bo and Vladdy, do you? And neither did they. Do they? So that's why they did. There, it. there, there was a reason that they that they zeroed in on Jose Barrios, and there you go. And, and Jose, re- Jose Barrios, Barrios has emerged right now as one of the most important members. And of he the does. Toronto and I, I really don't think if they want to re-sign <laughs> Barrios, he's going to cost a ton of money. Like he's going to cost them some, but not a a huge amount of money. He might be a guy you may be able to go more years with them. I, I think so, yeah. I, th- I think it. 590, 590 is the text line. The question we asked, which two teams do you think will make the wild card? Both Barker and myself. I, I, th- I think the Jays get home field, and I think it's the Yankees. I, see, I, I don't. That's, I'm sorry, that's who I'd want to see. Who do I think it is? I think the Jays get home field, but I think it's the Red Sox. I think there the Jays go. are going to get home field. I do too. I think they're going to get home field, but... I think the Red Sox are going to have enough. I really do think momentum this time of the year is a huge deal for these teams, especially a young team like the Blue Jays, and they got a ton of it. 7.07 is the first pitch. The Minnesota Twins are in town. Justin Morneau joins us next. You're listening to Baseball Central, powered by DoorDash on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Happy 
31st birthday, by the way. Marcus Simeon. Marcus Simeon. Celebrating his All 31st right. birthday. He's going to be doing some backstrokes and some <laughs> money. Man. You th- are, are you suggesting that from this point on, oh. Marcus Stroman, or, or Marcus Stroman, when did mm. I think of Marcus Stroman? Marcus Semyon, that's a Freudian slip. Marcus Semyon will be uh, the quality of birthday gifts. Gift giving will go would, up starting next so. year. I, w- I would I would. He's going to get paid, isn't he? Oh, probably not by the Blue Jays, but. Well, somebody's going to pay him. I wonder if the Minnesota Twins. How about are- that? We'll find out. We'll bring in Justin Morneau, Twins analyst and uh, Blue Jay Central contributor. Justin, thanks so much for joining Kevin and myself. Uh, hey, we had Derek Falvey on yesterday talking about the the way the Twins season had gone. Of course, we talked about the injuries and, and, and things not working out. But I'm wondering, given what you know of that division... I'm looking at the Twins, and I'm going, with a smart offseason, there's no reason this team can't give it a go next year, is there? I think that's the the thought around here. I I think it depends on how you want to go about it. If you want to build a team that is built to win a division or a team that's built to win a World Series. I think if you're thinking World Series, it's going to be an expensive offseason and what you need is a number one starter and <laughs> you guys plucked the number one <laughs> that we had or the number two, however you want to look at them, but mm. in Barrios, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's an offense that's pretty much there. There's a lot, also a lot of younger hitters coming. There's some pitching that's maybe not quite there, you know, as far as minor league prospects go, most of the guys are, you know, a ball double a, most of the guys who are in triple have already spent time in the major leagues this year. So there's a few, but yeah, I think, I think I don't know. I think if you ask most general managers, they tell you it's and you see Tampa do it almost every year. The easiest thing to do, or seems like the easiest thing to do, is build a bullpen. And I think if you can add a couple arms to the bullpen, but really what they need is starting pitching, and and that's a challenge. I mean, they've tried with Darvish, they tried with Wheeler, they've tried with you know various high end guys. I think it's hard to get guys to come to Minnesota. I think once you get there, guys learn to love it. But it's it's okay, I can go to a warm weather place or I can go to a cold weather place and, you know, do I want to be blowing on my hand until the middle of May or do I want to go and <laughs> pitch in Texas or in California or whatever? So I think there is some challenge, but yes, you're right. I mean, the division seems to be wide open. Detroit's better in building. Chicago is going to be good for a few years. And I think you're in that kind of dangerous spot. If you're the twins, you're the, do we go for it or do we kind of start over? There's just, it, you look at the roster and there's just too much talent to think that you need to start over. So I think that's probably the direction that they go is add to this group and, and hope some younger players take strides. Yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned younger players, Austin Martin, and may, you know, you don't really have a shortstop. Do you, do you think any chance that he could be that guy that could play shortstop or maybe, you know, move to second and have somebody else play shortstop. I, th- I think it's sort of where you said it was at. If you're trying to go for it, could you have a quarterback on your field that you really don't know if he could play shortstop or not, like a guy like Austin Martin. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge. I think Royce Lewis also, who was a former number one overall pick, I think they're very similar in their athleticism, and, and both of them they said, we're going to try him at short, we're going to get him out in center field and see if they can run around out there. And, and so there is some there, but at the same time, that's the position you need stability on. You need to know that those ground balls, the routine ground balls, even the ones that are not quite routine, when they get hit to shortstop on the ground, they need to be turned into outs. And I think it's hard to trust a young player to do that, to trust a, an inexperienced guy to know, oh, yeah, this guy with two strikes changes his approach. This guy really turns on balls when he gets in an offensive count. And I think there's so much to shortstop other than looking at the, at the card in your back pocket and mm-hmm. standing where they tell you to stand. I mean, there is so much to learn on the defensive side, and then on top of it, you know, production from the offense. So it's it's a it's a hard thing to do to break in a shortstop on a team that expects to win. I oh, think is the best way to put okay, it. Okay, there's well, there's a second baseman here in Toronto. You know, he he's Marcus Simeon. There's rumblings that he might want five for one twenty five. You think the Twins might go that way? Well, I mean, he was I think one of the main targets in the offseason. I believe it was the final was down to. Toronto, Minnesota, and maybe one other team. But I think they were going to let him play shortstop here because they moved Polanco over, who's having a terrific year, and 
I can't see them moving him back with, you know, he's hit 30 and, and driven in close to 100 and, yeah. and has had a really good year playing second base, and he's a little more suited for second base. So I think they will be I – I just don't know with, with both those guys you mentioned, Martin and Royce Lewis in the minor leagues, I think they're going to let one of those guys play shortstop to sort of go five years for yeah. Simeon. I, I, I just – I can't see that making sense where they have a, a guy in Polanco locked up long-term for a pretty team-friendly deal with some options. And, and so, I, yeah, they're going to need a shortstop, but I think I, – I believe their offer was very similar to what he signed for in Toronto, you know, close to that same – term and dollar amount so it's not like they were looking to give him a, a long-term deal last offseason so i'd be surprised to see it this offseason but you never know justin the uh the jays have set up their rotation uh to give to, to basically allow jose barrios and robbie ray to pitch at the end of the year in regular rest so whether it's game 163 which barrios would get mm-hmm. uh or the wild card game which 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 robbie ray would get you know, look, when, when the deal was made, everybody talked about Barrios and how many teams were in on it and what the price was and everything like that. And we also, he also came over here with the reputation of being a guy who was a real good guy, you know, always stayed healthy, et cetera, et cetera. What did you think the Twins had in, in Jose Barrios? And, and I'll ask you this, you know, another year of control. Like, if, if I'm a team that thinks I got a shot, if I'm the Twins... Why wouldn't I hang on to this guy? That's a good question. I think that's the question everyone was kind of asking around here of a rotation that was already, you know, pretty thin being filled with various rookies throughout the year. And then I think if they would have known that Kenta Maeda was going to have Tommy John surgery, they maybe, maybe don't make that move. Hmm. Right. So it's also a thing that there was rumors that he, they attempted to sign him to a long-term deal and they, they just didn't think they were going to be able to. So, you know, having two, high end, you know, top 100 prospects offered for a guy that maybe they realistically didn't think they were going to be able to bring back made sense at the time. And and now you're looking at filling probably four holes in the rotation realistically here. You look at it and you look back now and you go, if we want to win next year, it should be nice to have that guy who's, I don't know, for me, real, he's just one of those guys. He never seems overwhelmed, loves to pitch in big games and never really goes out there and gives you a clunker. You know, he never goes out there and, and goes an inning in two thirds and gives up six or seven earned runs and then wears down your bullpen for four games. And, and you know, <laughs> you wonder what you're going to get out of him. I mean, he's, he's very consistent. And I think to have consistency in a starting pitcher to go, all right, his worst, his bad starts, he's going to go four and two thirds or five and, and give up four runs. And his best starts, he's going to give you seven or even eight, eight innings of two earned runs. I mean, he's, he goes out there and gives you a chance to win every day, but even the bad ones are still not as bad as, as you know, a lot of guys' worst games. And I think that's the, you know, the floor for him and the ceiling are, are pretty, you know, not too far apart. As, as some guys can go out there and throw a, an eight inning shutout, and then the next time go an inning and two thirds and, and wear down your bullpen. So I think I very, very rarely ever remember having, having any starts like that where you're you're looking at it going, all right, this pitching staff is in trouble for the next three days, and and. He, he just he seems in control, and, and I think the bigger the game is, the more he enjoys it. I think that's the biggest thing for him. Hey, is there anything about Vladdy that surprises you? I mean, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I know we talked about him a lot, especially when he was first coming up. He didn't have a whole lot of protection in the lineup. Mm-hmm. He was very young. He had all the weight of the world, the expectations on him. I think now that he's been surrounded by so many other good players, he's been allowed to just play. And it, it's yes, he is the the main hitter in the lineup, but there's other guys that you have to worry about that can beat you as well. It's not like all right, we handle we handle Vladdy, everything's going to be okay. We can we can win this ball game. It's no, you put Vladdy on, you're going to have to deal with some other hitters. And, and I think that's the biggest thing. I think the adjustment that he's made defensively. I don't know. I think he's turned himself into a player. I mean, most guys when they're 20 or 21 are either finishing their, their last year of college and hoping to get drafted or they're, or they're an A ball hoping to make the jump to double A. And he was in the big leagues with, you know, the, the potential. And that, I mean, that can be, that can be hard for guys to deal with, but I mean, he's, it's crazy to think that he's got room to continue to improve and how good he can be. I mean, I, I just don't, it's a fantastic season. I mean, OPS over one, he he can potentially be even better than what he is now, which yeah. is crazy to think that he's going to continue to learn and, and recognize 
you know, when they're trying to attack him, when they want to pitch around him, everything that goes into being a, a good hitter, he's going to continue to get better. And I think that's a scary thought. Justin, good stuff as always, my friend. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Hopefully I uh, get up there and see you guys soon. Hope Absolutely. So. We look forward to it, my friend. Be well. Take care. I'm good. Thank you. Justin Morneau, uh, Minnesota Twins analyst and also Blue Jay Central yeah. contributor. 707 is the first pitch. We're just uh, – Jose Barrios is doing a uh, an on field interview session with the Twins writers right now. Yeah. Um, it's been about twenty minutes. Yeah, ne- it, never heard a bad word about Jose Barrios. No, he uh, it's just, it's fun wa- just watching the body language and you know ha- haven't been able to listen into Jose Barrios's yeah uh, the news conference he did in Minnesota after the deal just you know thanking the writers and we just look at him now he's shaking hands with mm-hmm. all the uh, yeah it's. Uh, he, yeah, it's right. You do not hear a bad word about this Never. guy. I I just think he's he's the type of guy that I think is going to become really integral to what goes on here. Like I I I really do, and yeah, I kind of feel for the twins now because I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought of it the way Justin Morneau put it. But Kenta Maeda goes down. That's a that's, and he's not going to be back next year. Yeah, it's a big hole. Those are two big holes. Yeah, I think that fill. for me that tells that tells you. Uh, a little bit more about the division they play in than the actual t- twins organization. That, that, that for me, they, they, they can, they can be an okay team in the central and, and, and compete in it. Yeah. Well, and Justin ha- and made, have a chance. To Justin improve. made a point. It, it, yeah. Th- there's, there's a difference in that division between winning the division and winning the world. Sure series. is. Right. Yeah. Like, you, you feel don't... comfortable at the white Sox winning that winning the world series. Yeah, stop it. I'm just saying. No, listen, I, I, I admit well, they're limping, in, they're limping into the playoffs, which is not a good thing. They got a lot of talent. They, everybody healthy. Their rotation is really good. Yeah, but Kevin, they, you know, for 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 a team that has that many good players, they are really, really suspect defensively. I just did, listen. I admit, I didn't yeah. do a deep enough dive into them. I've watched them play. They're not a good defensive team. They're not. They're, they're not. And I'm not. I don't like throwing the word fundamentals around all the time because I think it can be a catchphrase. Mm-hmm. But Jesus, you watch them play. There's a lot they do not do well. Yeah, for for me, what turned oh. the Blue Jays season around was they made the routine play boring. In a story, the shortstop well, certainly has anybody. First baseman has uh, anybody. Tay the Oscar th- the has third baseman now. The outfielders, you know, uh, Lourdes Scurriel Jr. All of a sudden, since he's been hitting. He's running well, all over the place, other thing, all over balls. And the other thing about Lourdes Gurriel Jr., if he misses a ball, there's always a chance he's uh, going to throw you out. <laughs> That's it. Seriously, right? I'm just saying, like, there's a reason why the Blue Jays are, are at where they're at. Yeah. No, that uh, that yeah. is really well said. 590-590 is the text line. We mentioned 707 first pitch. Jays and Twins. Twins are on the field right now taking batting practice at the Rogers Center. The roof is open. You're listening to Baseball Central, powered by DoorDash on the Sportsnet Radio Network. the minnesota twins in town of course it'll be a chance to renew acquaintances with old friend josh donaldson the third baseman of the twins this is actually the second time uh, he has been back at the rogers center uh he uh came back to the rogers center as well with the atlanta braves i think if i'm not mistaken did he go he did not he he went uh he went three for 15 in the series with a double home run the four-game series. Um, But Josh Donaldson, you know, Kevin, has had the type of year he's been a a good player in a team that hasn't been that good this year. Yeah, I I guess that's a a decent way to put it. He's, um, yeah. You know, he's scuffling a bit now. He's 9 for 55 in September. Uh, but four of those have been for extra base hits. He had a three-run home run in the 10th that had an exit velo of 113.6 miles per hour, and that is his hardest hit home run of the stat cast era. If you look at him going into tonight's game, he's fourth in barrels per plate appearance, fifth in average exit velocity, 10th in barrels, uh, yeah. and 10th and, and, and tenth in hard hit percentage. He's making good contact. Uh, he, uh, yeah, it, it's... You made an interesting point as well. He's if if you are the twins, 
Now you got Polanco. You've got him at third. If you add a if you add a a shortstop, yeah, you got Sano at first. I mean, there's. I still think there's something. I, I think there's that pitching is an awfully hard nut to crack. But I still think this is a pretty good lineup. Yeah, I think I think Josh Donaldson plays 150 games. He's going to give you an All Star caliber third yeah. baseman who, who can hit 30. Even, even at this age, there's no, there's there's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's it's a given. Like when he plays 150 plus games, he's an All Star. When he doesn't, he's not. Like it's it's really that simple. Like this year, he's played 120 games. He's missed about 25 games because of injury. You know, he had what he played 155 games in 2019. What did he hit? He hit 259. With 37 and 94, mm-hmm. that that's that's about what he's going to give you. Like if he plays 150 plus games, he is a really good player, and that's the that's the issue. Is you know that's that's probably why they couldn't trade him. A lo- probably a lot that has to do with what they owed him, the rest of his contract. Also, it was if he's not giving you 150 games, is he really worth it? Probably not, because you can find you can find anybody that can hit you know 240 with 20. And drive in 60, you can find a lot of people that could do that. That doesn't mm-hmm. cost as much as Josh Dawson. But if he's playing 150 games a year, like he was from like 2013 to 2017, now that's cooking. But you know, he he's a he's still a a threat. And you know, if you're the Blue Jays and Pete Walker, you look at probably one guy in this lineup right now without the boomstick in it. Yeah. You ain't letting him beat you. If you have to walk him, you walk him. That's you know, you, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with him running to first base instead of walking around the bases because that's what he's going to do here if he gets a homer. Of the core pieces in 2015, 2016, clearly Jose Batista was, Batista was the guy. He's the guy whose number is going to be retired. Hmm. But I've always thought that in terms of the culture that carried this team through in 2015. And this, I, I always thought that Russ and Josh had an impact on that. I'll say, I, okay, when, when Edwin was here, he's quiet. He really, you know, he was putting up serious numbers, but nah, nobody yeah. really paid and Jose had yeah, Jose and, had good years before but, JD. Yeah, Batista up. was, yeah, but, you know, nobody other than here took, Batista serious. Josh Donaldson showed up and all of a sudden it was brought attitude. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody look at me, afraid to throw in. Russ you know, Martin, he, he Russ Martin the same that. thing. Russ had a bit of the... I, I've said this to you. It's like Alec Noah. You American League East, you got to be a bully a little bit. That's what Josh Donaldson for me brought on top of him being a really good player and having an MVP season. He brought that. How dare you? You yeah. ain't coming in here and doing that. You better not throw a lefty against us. We're, we're going we're gonna to just tear that up and that's... You know, it's we we were lucky enough to have conversations with Josh and 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 you know I, I was lucky enough to to have conversation with Edwin and and Batiste in winter ball like they they just they looked at it and talked about it different than most people yeah they really did yeah it's uh, boy if this team does the Jays do go to the postseason and if they they somehow get into the ALDS it'd be fascinating to to sort of do a a uh, a deeper dive into into those two teams because there was something about that 2015 team that it, it's, it's hard to quantify, but Kevin, I almost got the impression. It's not that they thought that this was their last chance, but I think they thought it, they, it's the guys who were here, Russ, Josh, Batista, and Carnassio, not so much Tulawitzki, not so much David Price, because they knew, I think, in their heart of hearts, they knew they were ultimately going to move on. But I think that those that 2015 team, the core of that team looked at that season as their best chance to win, maybe their last best chance, which is which is different than this team. Yeah, and I, I keep making that point for with people. What intrigues me about this team just the fact that they're so good is the fact that look even if the even if the the new CBA completely changes the landscape of baseball Kevin you got I mean this is a team you can grow with you can grow with Bo you can grow with Vladdy you can grow with Alec Manoa you can grow with Alejandro Kirk if you're an Alejandro Kirk fan you can grow with Jordan Romano it it's it's 
it's different. There's a different, and, and it, in some ways it's made this a little less frenetic because I think for fans watching this team, it's easy to enjoy this because if they don't win it this year, there's a chance they will be back next year. And I, 2015, I think a lot of people thought, okay, if they didn't win it, and, and, and to me, as soon as David Price didn't resign, you can say whatever you want, but that was an indication, I think, to a lot of fans that, okay, this is, you know, this is on the wane. And I know yeah. 2016, they made the play. They weren't, they weren't as good a team in 2016 as in 2015. I'll still go to my grave thinking that if Brett, Brett, Cecil. Brett Cecil doesn't get hurt, they go to the World Series in it. 2015 and they win it. They sure do. I, I just don't think there's any, there's any doubt about nope. that. Yeah, I just think the, I'm with you. If uh, you know the smart fans that are, that are Blue Jays fans understand that the future's here, like we we will consistently see September's just like this. You know, maybe that's they're right. Be, maybe yes. they're, maybe they're better. Maybe they're 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 yep. fighting for the division and not the wild card. But a legit Blue Jay fan who understands what this team looks like, the talent that this team has, and if Ross just goes out and tweaks it. Just tweaks it. Like adds a couple of what ifs in the bullpen. What if this guy gets hurt? I got this guy to fill in. Sort of like the Rays do. Mm. You know, you're not doing it within, but you're going out and getting it and bringing it in. So, yeah, it's future's bright. We asked uh, folks to weigh in at 590, 590 with who they think will make the two wild card teams. Uh, Tanner from Toronto. It's a great point. He's saying, I think it's going to be Jays in Oakland. And he points out Oakland's schedule. They got the Angels three times, the Mariners seven times. They got the Astros six times. Now, how close are the Astros to to home field advantage? Uh, they're five games behind Tampa. All right, so it's going to be hard. At, at some point, if you're the Astros, you're probably gearing down a bit and thinking about, okay, how do we get our rotation set? How do we get it set for the for the postseason? How do we make sure everybody's rested? Because uh, they've had some guys that have been hurt this year. That that that's that's a great point, Tanner. That that is a that is a great point. Uh, the the athletic schedule, I mean, the Athletics and Red Sox have easier schedules. There's there's really there's really no way to put o- it. Oakland's bullpen's been you know it has it's been. not it's not it, been bad. It's been awful. Yeah, yeah no, they they Bob, uh, Bob Melvin's just you know to say we used to say Charlie put four or five names in a hat and close his eyes and pick one. Well, Bob Melvin's throwing names against the wall, and thinking, <laughs> please. Please, I beg you, and it's just not working out. So I, I'm with you. I, well, Oakland's only got one or two teams to 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 skip over. You know, the the so one of the two, maybe two of the three that are in the wild card race right now, meaning the Yankees, Red Sox, and 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 Blue Jays. Well, two of them have to just sort of you know trip on themselves. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, in in 14 games, what is it? it? The 14 games against the Red Sox, maybe they they're under 500. The Yankees are under 500 in their 15 games. The 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 maybe the Jays play 500, and the and the A's would have to go like yeah seven or eight or nine games above 500 in the next however many games they're playing. So yeah, you know miracles happen, but it, it would have to. It's not just the schedule; it's the team you in have to front, look at as you, well. You sure do. The teams in front of them have to really get some bumps. Yeah, boy, and and you know, Oakland should. Well, Oakland frankly just hasn't recovered from. They haven't replaced Liam Hendricks. And the Lord is Grand Slam. And the, and, and the Lord is Grand Slam. Absolutely. You could, just, you just, you could see the, the balloon just... Yeah. As soon as he hit it and then Marcus Simeon went back Lake City. Yeah. No, it's it's, uh, uh, no, it, it's really true that when the, the athletic season is over, and they'll look back, over, they'll look back at that series and go, yep. Just as the, the Mariners... Breathe life into their playoff run with the, that series against the Blue Jays in Seattle. Oakland's going to look at this season and go, man, that series in Toronto is what ultimately caught us. 607 is the first pitch. Twins, sorry, 707 is the first pitch. Twins and Jays from the Rogers Center. 607, Cliff Floyd will join us. You like the way I did that, eh? You're listening to Baseball Central, powered by DoorDash on the Sportsnet Radio Network. All right, so I'm monitoring the text line. It, it, first of all, everybody thinks the Jays are going to make the wild card. But uh, mm. well, I, the A's getting lots of love. Oof. 
Throw the Red Sox. The Yankees, by the way, Aaron Boone, just a couple of minutes ago, talking, or I guess an hour ago, more than a couple of minutes ago, talking to writers and saying that he expects Luis Severino to be available soon. Yeah, so I, I think they get Luis Severino. A little boost, too, just walking in the room saying he's available. Yeah. You know, the way the bullpen, they've had to work that bullpen. That, what's he going to give you? Well, that's that's like, yeah, I mean, what, when would you throw him? You starting him? You open him? I mean, he doesn't address your you issues doing? in the bullpen, and he doesn't address the fact that you really only got three hitters in your lineup that are worth worrying about. But what and he, he can't catch the ball. Yeah, that's a great point. But what he does do is he hides some woes that you do have in your bullpen. Huh. Maybe it's a fresh arm. Maybe you can throw a heater by somebody. He does throw really hard. So, seven oh seven is the first pitch tonight. Hyunjin Ryu against Michael Pineda. Ben Wagner, radio voice of the Blue Jays, will join us from the Rogers Center in a few minutes. The roof is open. It looks gorgeous down there. Beautiful. Twins are taking uh, batting practice. It is yeah. the first of three. A reminder, just I, I like, I'm actually doing this to remind myself. Tomorrow's game is at 307, and Sunday's game is at 107. So I just, a reminder if you're going out there, tomorrow's a 307 mm. game, Sunday's a 107 game. The news of the day concerns the Blue Jays' rotation. Uh, it has been set for the, the weekend. And for the first two games in Tampa, Jose Barrios will start Sunday against the Twins. That had been TBA. It had been Alec Manoa's day. Robbie Ray will get the start Monday against the Rays in Tampa. Alec Manoa goes Tuesday against the Rays. Now, this move gives him a little extra rest, but as my friend Mr. Barker points out, it also sets things up so that Jose Barrios can pitch the possible one-game playoff on his regular rest, and Robbie Ray can go the next day in his regular rest. So yeah. effectively, your two best starting pitchers, both of whom like to be on regular rest, will go into the postseason on regular rest. That, that, that one for me is all that matters. We said this yesterday. You worry about the big two, and all the, the other three are going to fall into place. Yeah, exactly. And that's basically what they've done right there. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Barrios a pitch Sunday. Matt's pitch is Saturday. As we mentioned, Ray on Monday, mm. Manoa on Tuesday. Yeah, the Manoa thing, the extra, what he'd be, he'd be pitching the eighth day, that's seven days rest. I, he, sometimes I think he, he's a little too fresh. I, he, for me, he's better when, when it's more moving than he's trying to overthrow it. But that's, uh, look, Petey knows his pitchers way, way better than I know him. I, you know, I, I like Alec Manoa more moving yeah. than, than his trying to overthrow. And I, I don't know about the back to back Tampa Bay starts. Again, it's, does it even matter at this time of the year? I don't really think it does. If his stuff's moving, he's locating, he's throwing strike one. Look, he's got the slider moving. The, the, the late-breaking slider that all of a sudden he came up with and, and the way he's, he's gripping it differently to have it 12-6, he had a cutter one. He had the one that he, that he threw 2-7, you know, the, the, on the clock mm-hmm. that he could back foot to a lefty, that he, could, that he could obviously throw away to a righty to strike somebody out. That's, he got all three of those. It doesn't really matter who he's facing. Well, as we mentioned, the topic of the day is the American League wild card, and we're asking you in the text line, 590-590, which two teams you think will be the American League wild card team. We're going to ask the same question of our next guest. We're going to put him on the spot right away. Cliff Floyd, former MLB outfielder, first baseman, current MLB network analyst, joins us on Baseball Central. Mr. Floyd, as always, we appreciate your time. I'm going to get right to it, Cliff. This is on the record. Who will be the two AL wildcard teams? Jays and Red Sox. Ooh, there you go. That's there. who I picked. Yeah. Why, why, the, why the Red Sox? We know. I think I know why the, the Blue Jays. Why the Red Sox? I just think when you, you know, when you think about down the stretch, who's playing the ball where you at least feel a little bit comfortable about where they look as a team, as a unit, all around. You know, Red Sox just look like they the team. I, I don't think the Yankees have, have done anything to make us feel like, you know, if they're a half game, it's like they're five out. You know what I mean? It, ne- it never seems like when I look at the Yankees, like, oh, they're good. Like, they're they're in a good position, um, you know, and they look good. You, you look at the game today, you, you can ill afford to lose those games. And, and it's just – happens seems like you know you watch them for a week and it's like no this just doesn't look the same doesn't look good doesn't look like they're really looking forward to 
to the end of the postseason. That's how it looks. Now, obviously, they are trying, but it looks like how do you lose a game like that last night down to your final? It just, it just doesn't look good at this moment. Yeah, it's uh, – boy, it almost seems, Cliff, as, it, as if it's just a, a systems failure. You know, Chad Green – I mean, all the guys we've been used to, Chad Green, uh, Aroldis Chapman – uh, you know, I, I Gary Sanchez. Gary Sanchez. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, Gary Sanchez has always had issues. To me, the to me the the big thing is I'm just I'm flabbergasted by Green and 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 Chapman. I I, I just well, you know, I didn't see that coming, Cliff. Yeah, I didn't see it either. I think you know that's why this game to me is so incredible because you know we always talk about the players, the names on the back of the jerseys. Very seldom do we talk about the mental. So, and the mental is what I've always paid attention to detail with because this is, for, for, for instance, you, you look at Joey Gallo. Two weeks before they trade for Joey Gallo, he could, you couldn't get him out. 370, 11 homers, 40 ribbies, 20 games, right? You're thinking, well, well hell, that, that, that's the guy I need. Well, when you actually trade for him, He's in 088 with a with a, with, with one homer and nine RBI. Now he gets on the plane to fly to New York. What do you think he's thinking about? You think he's thinking about anything other than oh crap, I'm going to New York with what I feel mentally right now? Mm-hmm. That that that's the game to me is watching these guys go out there and not able to execute when they when we've seen them. I mean, for years execute. I mean, Green stuff is as good as anybody's in the game. Aroldis Tubman. I need not tell y'all. Y'all seen it numerous yeah. times. Yeah. But when you flirting around, you throw a hundred plus miles an hour. It, it, you you couldn't tell me about a damn off speed pitch. You, you it wouldn't even it wouldn't even like make sense to me. And it, and it, and it frustrates me because I'm like, well, it, like you say, what is the system telling him you have to incorporate off speed pitch, or is it just you want to tinker with something that ain't broke? Because if I throw a hundred and one. You, if I get beat with 101 or 100 miles an hour every time I go on the mound, hey, then you then then you can say, well, maybe he should flip it up there, curveball, or whatever he wants to flip up there in time. But until that happens, I'm not incorporating anything else but fastballs and locating them where I need to. Cliffy, down the stretch, you play in games like this. Did you ever look at the opposing teams that you were trying to beat? to the playoffs to see who they were playing. Like the Jays say they're looking at the, that the Yankees are playing Cleveland. They, they look at their, the Red Sox schedule and they're playing the Orioles and they're like, uh Oh, we got to win these games. Cause this team's playing the Orioles. Did you ever do that? Um, I can't say I've never, I've ever done that. Kev. I, I you know what, KB? I think, I think the biggest thing is you, you, you better pay attention to the little details that's going to get overexposed if you don't do fundamentally sound baseball down the stretch. Why worry about t- – like, like the worst thing that I've ever heard down the stretch is when you look at schedules and they're like, oh, that schedule favors, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Really? So what you're telling me is the Baltimore Orioles ain't hear that conversation about how bad they stink mm-hmm. or the Colorado Rockies haven't heard that they stink on the road but they're really good at home? Like – Every team hears it, and if you're a manager on those teams, and I and, and you're making a good living, you better bet that they tell their boys you better leave a lasting impression going to the next year. You might not be here. Well, opportunities present themselves on on bad teams too. How do I know that? I've been on bad teams. Mm. I, if I'm going fishing, you going fishing too. <laughs> Hey, Cliff, uh, Vladdy Jr. Uh, right now leads the American League in, in average. Uh, he's tied for first in home runs, and uh, he's, he's uh, I believe, third uh, in RBI. We had Eric Karros on uh, a couple of days ago, and he was talking about Vladdy Jr. and Vladdy Sr. Now, I don't want to get into comparison thing. Well, actually, I kind of do, because one, one of the things Eric said is, look, <laughs> let, he's, er, Eric said, let's give... Let's let's hope and let's give Vladdy pretty good health, okay, so that he doesn't have a career-ending injury or a- anything like that, right. that he, he stays in the field, plays first base. He said, I think we need to, even though it's only one year, we need to at least entertain the possibility that he ends up better as a better hitter 
than his dad. Can you see that happening? I mean, these are tough questions. Yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, you know, um, can I see that happening? Well, I can see the one thing that I look at with, with, with both of them is they hated striking out, right? Yeah. We know that, right? Yeah. Like, junior, I mean, you can watch his at-bats, and I, I've said it on air numerous times at MLB Network that he's made Teoscar Hernandez a better player, flat out. Hmm. Now, obviously, hmm. getting George Springer to come across the border has been huge and instrumental, in my opinion. That's just all speculation. haven't heard. But I'm just watching how he plays the game. I mean, I was scratching my head a couple of years ago going, is he going to waste this talent of being a superstar to Oscar? So, but to, to the point of Vlad, his adjustments are so good that I see him hitting 330, like consistently. Mm. Like, I, I really do. I, I, I mean, at 22 years of age, his adjustments on the fly, which is what you have to do at the big league level, or well, in anything you do, basically. But at the big league level, you pretty much make the adjustment on the fly because if you're good, they make adjustments to you, and then you make adjustments to them, and so on and so forth. That's the what I look at with him and think, gosh, dog. I mean, he's unstoppable. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think you really can look at him and go, well, he's hit a ceiling. No, I think the ceiling for him is like we're gonna be shocked at something he does sooner and later. That's that's how I see him. You know, it's it's interesting. I remember conversation. I think Kevin had it with you. As we, all three of us had it uh, on Baseball Central. It was a few years ago, but we were talking about. Uh, how difficult it is to pinch hit and how, you know, you need to find a routine. And you talked about when you were with Tampa sort of moving into a DH role, right? And you had to figure out, okay, I, I, how do I go about, how do I go about keeping ready? How do I go about getting ready? One of the things we know about Vladdy from talking to people around the Jays is that he decided at some point, I think it might've been in July, that he was just, he was going to cut down all the extra work. Like he was he was not going to, you know, spare time. He was going to find something else to do uh, instead of going in the cage. And he was going to take his BP and he was going to kind of save his swings. And I'm just wondering, when you talk about adjustments on the fly, is that an adjustment a young player has to learn as well? Like how do I manage, how do I manage my skill in the heat of the summer and then into September? Absolutely it is. And, and you know, the sooner the better of just understanding that your time is valuable. You know, there's, there's something called eyewash to work when you're really good. You, you want to show that you work so hard that the coaches see you. That's eyewash. When you work smart and you understand that you have it down pat, you can actually work yourself into a slump. You can work yourself into bad habits. Then you stop. And I think the one thing you've noticed with him is when he's at the plate, if there's a subtle change, we don't see it with our eyes. Mm-hmm. But, he, but he'll tell you, oh, I did this and I did that. Those are things that you can go into the video room. And, KB, you know exactly what I'm saying. You can go right into the video room and figure out exactly what I'm doing wrong and go, okay, cool. Now I'll, I'll, I'm going to do this at 7 o'clock tonight instead of working for an hour and a half when the dog days of summer are here and you're, 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 you're a little bit tired and the bat's not coming through the zone like it was. You're fouling off pitches. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. And that's the maturity when I was just talking about watching him mature this year has been incredible to watch because I think everybody's waiting to see what Vlad was going to be. And and it started with him getting in great shape. Let's not forget that. Right? Like that in itself was like wow moment. Like I was so impressed with the fact that he decided that enough is enough. I know I'm really good. I'm not going to waste this. And oh, by the way, they're giving out three and four hundred million dollar contracts. <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> Cliffy, really good of you to join us, my friend. Great to hear your voice again. Yeah. Thanks for this. No Hope we see you soon. Stay yeah, safe, man. You. Yeah, see you. You too. All, All right, folks. Cliff Floyd of the uh, MLB Network. That is a great line. You can work yourself into a slump. Bark, you played. You work yourself into I, a slump. I, I was that guy, o- overdoing it, uh, not not uh, taking a step back and thinking that that too much was was a bad thing. I was the guy that tried to impress everybody because that's the only way I was going to stay in the big leagues. But you got to remember now, it's, it's to each his own. Every, sure, everybody's sure. not Bo. Everybody's not Blatty. Everybody's not George Springer. Like, there's there's those three guys. There's Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez, I think, was a little bit more like me because he's he's in that earn it. 
you got to you gotta put up or shut up kind of thing. Like, you didn't really know what he was. Baseball IQ wasn't really there. You know, the, the talent that you were seeing occasionally wasn't consistently there. He has to work into who he is now. But then there's everybody else, and everybody else has to be who I was, which is, look at me, coach. I'm taking a 1,000 swings. Play me, please. Yeah. Not everybody's Vladdy who can go, okay, I'm, I'm just not going to show up to batting practice that day because my bat's a little slower than it should be. Or, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lift as many weights because I don't feel right. The, my, my lower half is, is not, you know, connected to my upper half, so I need to lay off of that a little bit. So, you know, again, it's, it's two inches on, and, you know, the, the Cliff Floyds of the world and the Vladimir Guerrero Juniors of the world, they can do that. And then there's everybody else. What was it a famous former Blue Jay said it's not the tri league to get it done Lee. but boy everybody and put yourself in vladdy's vladdy's position too because we know that vladdy took to heart the criticisms of his weight and we, you know bo talked about him getting up in front of the team and all that and that criticism about weight the underlying criticism is what guy didn't work hard enough so if you're vladdy you come in camp in great shape. You got this really good year going. And then you kind of hit it, hit a bit of a bump, and you got you tr- try to work your way out of it because you want people. You don't want people to say, yeah. "Well, Vladdy's take." Like, I, put your. I, I always tell. I think about this. Put myself in Vladdy's position, mm. where at some point I said, "Yeah, you know what? I know everybody is waiting for me not to work hard because they think I'm gonna." I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just not going to be that guy. I'm going to yeah. step back and be a pro and take care of myself. Like, that is, Jesus, for a kid that age, that, that's... Yeah, I, th- I think somebody, too, a close around him said, you're, you're going to miss out here on a, on a ton of money. You know, let's face it. You, you do things that you're really good at to I'm make sure his dad to t- must take have care had. of your family yeah. and, and support your family the way you ultimately want to support them. And he knows he can do it with, with, a, with a ton of money because he has tremendous but, talent. But what I'm saying is your natural, especially as a young person, your natural reaction would be, got to work harder, got to work harder, got to work harder. God impress people. And it really says something... For somebody to go, no, I got to work smarter. Yeah, I, th- I think I got to work smarter. I, I think too, he was so much better than everybody at the minor league level that that it didn't, he didn't really have to keep himself in tremendous shape. Mm. He shows up here, pitchers are just as good as he is. That they can locate in off the plate, they can make a slider look like a strike until the end. That dives off the plate, that's a ball, and he knows that to to command that and not swing at one of those, he has to be in better shape to make the bat quicker. And yeah, it's I, I just think you're seeing all of those things come right in front of you, like all the little things that he has to do defensively, running the bases. How many times have I looked at you and said, I even text you and said, man, Vladdy looks fast. Yeah. Like he can go second to home, like really good. He's cutting corners on, on the bags. And, you know, he's, I'm okay with somebody not pinch running for him because he knows how to run the bases. He's fast enough to do it. The amount of mistakes he does not make anymore in less than two full seasons in the majors. Think about this. Yeah. I, did you think he was going to be able to play first base every day? I, I know you say you. Yeah, I do. Okay. I did. But I think a lot of people would have thought, no, he's going to have to DH way more than I, that. And they're going to, you know, and boy, late in the game, close game, I don't know, maybe you want another. They don't really think that now. Yeah. Vladdy think- takes an extra base. Doesn't surprise me. I had to be honest with you. I didn't think this, the losing 40 pounds would turn him into Goliath at the play. Like just, mm-hmm. just, just doing Things that most human beings can't do, like hitting 73 balls 110 miles an hour or harder in, in a season. He's 22 years old. Yeah. Like, just losing 40 pounds to do that? I had no idea that he could do that. But playing first base, look, he's an athlete. Even even when he had the the extra 40 pounds. Yeah, probably not as good as an athlete as he is now, obviously. But, you know, Cliff, made a, Cliff also made an interesting point. We talked yesterday about how – we don't think Bo has even scratched the surface yet. Not even close. We think that Vladdy has scratched that surface. Not saying he can't get better, but we think he's at least scratched that surface. Mm-hmm. I like the way uh, the way Cliff put it, is that we are going to see him do something, essentially some, uh, something out- astounding along the way. Yeah, I think Cliff, he's talking about sustaining this for a long time, like say over ten but years. You talked about exactly Albert like Pujols, man. Yeah, that's I've said that since day one. When, when he when he started doing this at the beginning of the year, 
that's just that's the first name that popped in my mind was consistency. Doing it, it's one to, it's one thing to do it one year, but do you see a guy right in front of you who can make adjustments on the fly like he does everything off the field? You know his diet, the way he plays first, where he stands at first base to keep him on the field long, the way he runs bases when he's not supposed to run hard to first, all the little things that go into to being a big leaguer. Can he continue to do that and be that for the next ten years? I think he can. And that's the name that kept popping in my head, and I'll keep saying it. Would you take it if you're a Blue Jays fan? Albert Pujols for the next 11 years? (laughs) 330 and 100 for, yeah. Yeah. That's special. And then you had Bo to the mix, who you can tell is, he sees Vladdy doing it. You can see it. I I, I was a competitor. I I saw somebody doing something in front of me that, that could do it better, and I wanted to do it. You see Bo, that's why you're seeing Bo do the two strike thing more OO. You see him, Vladdy, do something different. Well, it's working for him. I got to catch up. I want to be that. I want to do that. There's a little internal competition there. They're not going to come out and say it, but they're human beings, and they want to be better than their buddy. And boy, that's that's if you're a, again, if you're a Blue Jays fan, that's just that's just add to the excitement. Ben Wagner is the radio voice of the Blue Jays. He will have the call tonight. Seven oh seven is the first pitch. Michael Pineda against Yun. Jin Ryu. We'll talk about the Jays. I'll talk a little bit about the Buffalo Bisons. Buffalo Bisons captured their first ever AAA East Northeast division title. That's something when you capture the East Northeast division title. Yeah. Uh, their first division title since winning the International League North Division in 2005. Now, think about this. Now, we talk about the Blue Jays being on the road. Now, these guys were on the road at the start of the year as well. Okay, like you've been there, Bark. Can you imagine being on a, on a, on a triple A team and basically not having a home field? Yeah, it's tough. To, to, I, see, I mean, you know, is. everybody wants a wants a bed, wants wants a place to chill, wants a wants their own bed. They, they want to form a habit. Yeah, that's what home field is. Ben Wagner joins us next. We're going to give the Buffalo Bisons a little love, and yes, indeed, we'll continue talking about this series against the Twins. It's Baseball Central on Sportsnet 590, The Fan. A reminder for going at the Rogers Center tonight. One, the roof is open, no surprise. Two, get there in time, you'll see Scotty Barnes, the newest member of the Toronto Raptors, their first-round draft pick throughout the first pitch. Just saw him interviewed on uh, Tim and Friends. So again, 707 is the first pitch tonight. Michael Pineda, Yunjin Ryu. Let's bring in Ben Wagner, the radio voice of the Blue Jays. Mr. Wagner, as always, thank you for doing this. We hope you enjoyed your off day. We're going to talk about the Jays in a minute, but I want to throw a shout out because I know folks, we have a lot of listeners in Buffalo. I want to throw a shout out to the Bisons. That's a, uh, yo, know, the Jays... The Jays weren't the only team in this organization that spent much of the season on the road. Hell, the Vancouver kids are still on the road, as far as I know. But that's that's quite a uh, it's quite an accomplishment for the Thunder Bisons. I think they were we're calling them right, the Trenton <laughs> Buffalo Thunder Bisons. Thundering herd, yeah, the thundering herd, right? It is. Um, and think back further from the start of a minor league campaign, where guys weren't sure when their season was going to start at the end of the major league spring training schedule. There was some uncertainty whether minor league baseball was going to happen at all, if it would just be the upper level guys or the priority players sticking around every spring training camp. And then they came up with the idea, let's just delay the start of the minor league component of the season to the beginning of May. And then, of course, with Buffalo being needed, not only in construction, but for the Blue Jays, that meant that they were trying to find a home. It could have been State College, Pennsylvania, where Penn State plays. Uh, They had a couple of other options, a Ryder University, but they settled on Trenton because there was no more affiliated baseball there. And they went into Trenton pretty much unknown how long they were going to be there because the Blue Jays didn't know how long they were going to be in Buffalo. So it uh, it turned out to work for everybody, and and that is quite an accomplishment. From a AAA standpoint, Uh, where you have to go into unknowns, you have to deal with roster moves, you have to deal with everything that AAA has going along with it, plus then win with guys, you know, maybe 
being a little salty that they're not in the big leagues anymore, uh, that, that's a really tough row to hoe. And congratulations to Casey Candell, uh, Devon White, Corey Hart, Jeff Ware, the coaches that are down there. They did a tremendous job. Uh, what are you expecting from Han Jin Ryu tonight coming off a stinker? I need to I need to see his fastball, and I desperately need to see that change up back. I want to see fastball command. I mean that that that's where it rests for me. Is his command has not been good. It's it's put him behind. It's put uh, the sequencing in jeopardy. It has put the rhythm of a game in jeopardy the last uh, three weeks, really three yeah. weeks, really, uh, and. To me, it's very reminiscent of what we saw in June with him, and he got it back on track. And, boy, you know, this pitching staff certainly becomes much, 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 much more dangerous if you have him being a very big weapon. They already know that they've got Robbie Ray. They've got Jose Barrios. You've got Alec Manoa. Mm -hmm. If you can get a fourth linchpin into this thing, boy, doesn't that make things a lot more exciting thinking about perhaps getting past the wild card yeah why do you think Ryu's uh velocity is so up and down 34 years of age you think that's what that's the only reason that's the only thing that i can come up with I, i've asked yeah. a number of people and uh and you go to the the hot button questions right how's mm -hmm. he feeling is he healthy is something wrong and the answer to those fine no no and they're like okay well is it just because Maybe a dead arm phase at 34 years of age. Is it the increased workload out of 2020? Uh, I can't get any, any answers. I wish I had a deeper insight to this. But, um, you, you know, he has not changed his in-between start routine at all. And we know that that involves pretty much nothing. Because um, <laughs> he doesn't like to throw. He doesn't like to do bullpens. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll go out and he'll play catch a lot. And we see him, you know, do some running and in, in light work and workouts in between his starts. But... I'm told nothing of the plan has changed around Hyunjin Ryu other than the fact that the results are just not as crisp as what you were expecting. Kevin pointed this out a little earlier once we found out what the, the rotation was going to be going into that Tampa series. And now that we know that it's going to be Ray Monday, Manoa, and Tuesday. So if you look ahead, that allows Barrios and Ray to make their final starts of the year on five days for Barrios, or on four days, Fifth day, yeah. sorry. For Barrios, that would be possibly game 163. For Ray, it would be first game of the wild card. So I understand that in making this announcement, Charlie said, well, you know, it's a little bit of load management for Alec Manoa. But, Ben, how much of it is that or how much of it is do you think you just want to get those, you want to keep those two guys in their regular routines for what, what will be the biggest games, the biggest game or biggest games of the year one way or another? Well, a lot of it goes around what the schedule is, what the situation is. And then on the the third bullet point on the priorities here will be Alec Manoa, just to give him a little bit of a blow. But again, the Blue Jays went into this series with three different scenarios uh, that they could have tapped to line up their pitching to get through the regular season. Uh, priority number one, what is Robbie Ray going to feel more comfortable with? And we know this. He, he loves to throw on his fifth day. The four days in between, throw on that fifth day. Jose Barrios, he checked out, watched him throw his bullpen today. On the heels of an entire routine on Wednesday afternoon, he's good to go. And Charlie Montoyo echoed that, echoed that to the media as well. Jose told me that he was going to make his next start on Wednesday, and I thought that was pretty impressive um, when I chatted with him on Wednesday afternoon. Because remember, he, there was the abdominal issue mm -hmm. that crept up on Tuesday night. I thought, wow, wow, that's an incredible turnaround. Must not have been that big of a deal. So those two guys right now are the priority because they will pitch in two of the most important games down the stretch. And that is if there's a 163 and then bang, game one to the wild card. And that's, that is the best case scenario for the Blue Jays who have been afforded a little bit of the opportunity here with these two off days yesterday and then the one that's coming up uh, that they can line things up. Have you seen anything from George Springer around the cage from, from you talking to him that would tell you that he could get super hot here in the next 10 days? Yes, because he's feeling better. Every day, day by day, the word is feeling better, improving around George Springer. And the fact that 
just in two weeks' time now, we have seen him only do some light reps to maximize the energy that he's got in the batter's box when it was in the cage. Now he's doing all of his cage work, and he's taking full rounds of BP. So that tells me, one, the workload increase for George Springer and making sure he's just going through his daily routine is a big vote of confidence for George and himself and plus all of us that are out there observing it. So I think that. I, I chatted with Dave Hudgens, uh, the bench coach, and who has known George Springer for a really long time in 2015, even when, you know, the, the Astros had kind of their first surge. Uh, he senses it's coming as well. And he was right on the money when Springer came off of the injured list the last time that I asked him about George Springer and thinking how that timing is coming coming around. Uh, you know, I, I still wonder if that leg is going to feel as 100% from the first pitch that he sees to maybe that ninth inning pitch that he sees. Mm -hmm. That's The jury's still out on that one. But the best is yet to come for George, and, and the good news is there have been no regressions with George Springer. Do you have any idea who we may see from the AAA team? Now, I know they've got the – they have that five – what, they play five home games in – at Salem Field, September 22nd to 26th. That's the, uh, the I think, Triple A's. It's, it's, it's final stretch is what it's called, right? It's a, it's, it's the playoff. Uh, it's a 10 game playoff. Is there any? Will we see anybody from from Triple A? I understand that it can't be. Some of them won't be on the postseason roster. But could we see somebody come up, maybe for a, a couple of games to make a difference? Yeah, I or wonder. try to make a difference. Pardon me. Uh, yeah, I wonder, and, you know, this time of year, 40-man spots are very, very coveted. But I wonder if they still want to get a look at uh, at Gregory Polanco. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really got the sense when he was brought into the organization, one, they needed some outfield depth at AAA with Josh Palacios and his setback for Swall, obviously still not on the 40-man roster. But I wondered, I wondered if Gregory Polanco would be – somewhere in the fringes of are you happy with what you're getting from Corey Dickerson? Are you happy with Gerard Dyson as being a backup? Perhaps that's a that's an easy flip-flop. And I, you know what? Honestly, on the pitching side of things, they're a little bit deeper because of the two men that they're carrying, and they went heavy on the pitching. That's no surprise. I think Brian Baker might be a guy, if there is a need, mm -hmm. that pops back in here. But I don't think there's any rush at all to get the guys that Blue Jay fans will know. Anthony Castro, Rafael Dolis, uh, A.J. Coles at AAA still. I don't think there's just any pressing desire for the Blue Jays to find out anything more from those guys that have been here on and off this season. I think the guys that are here are the guys that they want. Okay, I got to get your feel on this. Say, say game 163, they got, they're facing Garrett Cole. You think they, got, they, they would put Corey Dickerson in center field? They may start with that. Um, Randall Gritchick has, I know that in the smaller pocket of play, yeah. you know, recently, the last couple of games, he's been better. But that, that to me, is not a favorable matchup. And you have to have somebody out there. You think so. That can play. I, I think so. I really think so. That, that's my gut. That's my also paying attention to what's happened the last month, essentially, for the Blue Jays in, in how they're kind of platooning. The center field position, plus then the third base position yeah. at the same time. Um, it, it's not an ideal situation. You know, they would like to have somebody out there each and every day as a fourth outfielder if one of those guys aren't ready to go because uh, it doesn't sound like George Springer is going to be out there. So in a game 163, I think, you, one, you got to have some coverage out there and then you, you find out what the late game scenario is going to be if it's going to stay heavy right-handed or yeah. perhaps if the lefty comes in. Ben, we're going to let you go. Rest up. Look forward to your call tonight, as always. Thank you for doing this. Nice going. All right, guys. Have a nice weekend. Oh, I, will, I will see you out there tomorrow. That is Ben Wagner, our radio voice of the Blue Jays. He's such a nice man. He's a nice man. 707 is the he first pitch. Like Michael Pinate. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He loves you. Well, What's not the love? You do that. Michael Pineda against Tian Shin Ryu. Why? That's just not. That's it's rude. It's rude. It's unnecessary. Hmm. And here I was going to read out a really nice text about you. Oh, scroll, scroll away from I'm that. Not, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> 590, 590 is a text line. I'm just, I'm just not going to do they, it. They're still Oakland? Some folks still say in Oakland. Yeah. Man, th th those six games against Houston. I... Nate from Winona says the wild card is going to be the Rays and the Yankees. 
the Jays are winning the division. Huh. Optimist. I mean, I like it, but. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, no, most people seem. I think most people. Well, surprisingly enough, I haven't seen anybody say the Jays. The Jays aren't going to make it. I, I, the, for me, the the Jays are the best team out of the three. Yes, they, they got the best starting pitching. Yes. They play the best defense, and they got the best lineup. And I'm with you now that they're better than the White Sox. So well, they put, might you, be. You put, they, this, you put this Jays team in the Central. <laughs> How's it? Looking? They could be the third best team in the third best team in the American League. Uh, you, I mean, Houston. I, no, well, Houston now. I mean, I'm saying Tampa and Houston. Mm-hmm. Camp in Houston and 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 these guys. Yeah, I I could see that. I, th- I think I th- a lot of that depends on who's who's pitching for the Jays, where they're pitching. Is it home or on the road? That has something to do with a young team on the road. Not the easiest thing in, in high pressure situations. But look, I, I just I just think when when the Jays have have made that routine play more boring, they've <laughs> made a, you know in game adjustments offensively. Don't chase. Try to lay off the pitcher's pitch. You know, that will maximize your talent. And when when you do that, because you have so much talent, you have more talent, you know, quite frankly, than the other team has, you're going to beat that team most of the time. And and by the way, that starting rotation, say what you want, could stand up against any other starting rotation in the American League. I'd go along with that, yeah. I mean, the White Sox probably when everybody's because the Rays don't right matter. There, Rays doesn't Rays matter. Don't really have a starting rotation. It's all about the pin and, and next man up mentality, that kind of thing. So you know, as a whole, it's probably the Rays just because of how many arms, different arms, power arms. Yeah, but in terms of rotation, yeah, road your rotation against our rotation, the Jays can stack up against anybody's. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm me look, against you. I'm looking at the White Sox. One against well, one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they yeah, can, yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. they can. Stack Would you up. feel comfortable uh, Cole against Ray? That's that's the that's that. And after that, I'm stacking up my if 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 Alec Manoa is my number three, I'm stacking him him that number three up against any other number three. Five ninety five ninety is the text line. We asked the question a little earlier. Which of the two teams, or which two teams, do you think will make the wild card? We could. Feel free to say it's not going to be the Jays. I may not read it over the air because I'm in an, in an extremely optimistic root, m- mood right now. But nah, I might anyhow. I might read it out over the air. You're listening to Baseball Central, powered by DoorDash, on the Sportsnet Radio Network. All right, 707, Hyunjin Ryu against Michael Pineda. First pitch, Jays Twins. It's off to Tampa. We got the Yankees. We got the Orioles. Tampa, Minnesota. And then the Yankees, Orioles, and Mr. Barker. C'est ça. That's French for that's it. So. Oh. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball Central on Sportsnet 590, the fan of the Sportsnet Radio Network. A reminder, by the way, that uh, you do have an opportunity to see the Jays this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 307 Saturday, uh, 107 Sunday. You can go to bluejays.com for tickets. And uh, tickets are also available for the regular season games against the uh, final regular season games against the Yankees and and then that series against the Orioles. And, uh, well, folks, from that point, that point on will uh could be could be hosting a wild card game could be hosting a one game playoff could be playing a one game playoff someplace else could be a three team playoff I don't would that be cool you don't want to see that oh yeah no i yeah i i, I just that would play havoc with uh i was going to say it'll play havoc with the pitching but what the hell it'll play havoc with everybody's pitching yeah Meanwhile, the Rays are going to be sitting back there going, <laughs> Yeah, the, the Rays are sitting pretty. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. 
Amir from Toronto, the Yankees will not make the playoffs. They play the Red Sox and the Jays, both teams trying for the playoffs. They will not win one of the two series. Therefore, they will be eliminated from the playoffs. Ooh. I mean, you could say that. In a must-win game, i.e. the wild card, would it ever make sense to use one of your starters in relief if you realistically trust your bullpen to get through the eighth and ninth inning, Will and Guelph? Well, as my friend Mr. Barker said, I think rightly, if you operate under the assumption, well, let's let's give the Jays, let's say that there's no one-game playoff. Let's say the Jays get home field, the wild card, there's no playoff, so the Jays are hosting the wild card, Robbie Ray gets the start in that game. We've already talked about that, that Robbie Ray will get the start in that game. And the nice thing about having, by the way, I'm just going to throw this as, as an aside, the nice thing about having the Ray uh, the Jays host the wild card game is you don't have to worry about weather. So you don't have to worry about that mucking up things. Mm. But as Mr. Barker's pointed out, if you don't need Jose Barrios for game 163, that would make him... Your options are you could have him for the bullpen or you could have him starting, potentially starting game one of the playoff series on a couple of days rest. So I think what you do, I, let's see. It, it, look, look if, if, if Robbie Ray start in the wild card, I'm going to say this. If Robbie Ray start in the wild card game and you see Jose Barrios warming up in the fourth inning, it ain't good. Yeah, pro- probably it not. Ain't, it, it ain't good. Pro- probably not. If I'm going to the playoffs, I got two guys in the bullpen I'm going to count on. That's Mesa and Romano. Bingo. Exactly. If and I, may, if maybe I, and- if I can use Alec Manoa, if I can use Brios, if I can use Steven Matz, I'm using them. Yeah. Steven Matz come in and get me three big outs. Yeah. He, he'll probably throw a little bit harder. He's he's good at locating in, so he could throw to a righty and a lefty. I'm okay with that. I'd rather see him than a Soria or a you know, I, I, Trevor Richards. Do you, you feel Adam Simber? I like I, you know, spinning it from down under when it matters. I, like I, if I'm going to get beat, who's my best? I'm going to pick my five guys. Yeah. If if four of those are starters, those four are getting it. Yeah, that's. Mm. Uh, and again, I go back to uh, go back to the benefit of that Barrios trade, man. I picture this team without Jose Barrios. Yeah, it's looking a little tougher, and and too he's he's had some pretty good starts here. That's helped him get to this point. So you'd have somebody else pitching in that spot, you know, uh, an Anthony K. Uh, stay hot. So it, yeah, it's <laughs> so see, so yeah, you'd rather see a Barrios than you would see a minor leaguer pitching. You mentioned this. You asked Ben this question. I'm going to ask you the question. I'm going to turn it around a little bit on you as we watch Michael Pineda. That is an interesting. It's an interesting warmth. That is a big man, by the way. What do you expect to see from what n- not expect to see? What do you need to see from Hyunjin Ryu? Six innings. Are you going to be looking at at what 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 would I mean, be a good ve- what what would be a velo for you? Ninety, like eighty nine, ninety one, somewhere in that range. You okay. know, I don't need to see the ninety two, ninety three. I don't that think. We, not you, real sure he's got it in the tank. You want to see a slider tonight? No, <laughs> no absolutely not. I, I want if, if he's got the command in with the four seamer and can feed the cutter off that. Have the, the change up, good arm speed down and away. Why would he need the slider? The, the, don't try. Why would you try and throw a slider to a, to a Giancarlo Stanton? Which that's who he threw it to. A judge a couple of times. I know he's trying to give him a different look and good for him to give it a college try because he's trying to get big outs when it matters. But I want you to be you. Don't yeah. go outside the norm here because when you do, it starts affecting the team down the road which is sort of what it did because now you're trying to figure out, is he good? Is he not good? Have this guy ready. Don't pitch this guy because he might need to pitch one reuse up. He's sort of like the stripling thing. I mean, no offense to Ross stripling, dude, but do you really want to see him the next however many games he's playing 16? Not especially, that, that be, no. You know, he's he's made some serious adjustments and half, hats off to him, but I want to go with my best, and right now Ross stripling's not my best. Ryu is one of them. He's one of the four. Okay, so I I, I want to see what makes him that – that good, which is the arm speed, the arm slot, and you know the 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 consistent rhythm, which will help him a lot. Put it down. Don't do a ton of shaking. Don't overthink it, which he does a lot. He, he'll overthink it. Three, you know, what if I throw him this? I can't throw him the next at bat, the same pitch. I, don't worry about that. All right, so let's get you set for tonight's game. Let's do a little reset here. The Guardians slash Indians and the Yankees are in their warm up. Uh, the Twins and the Jays, they're just about ready to start their game. The Red Sox are facing the Baltimore Orioles. 
the Oakland Athletics in Seattle. Keep an eye on them. They're still in this. The Mariners are playing the Kansas City Royals, and the Athletics are taking on the Angels. That is the uh, that is the slate for the weekend. The standings right now going into the weekend, the wild card standings, show the Blue Jays atop with a one percentage point lead over Boston. The Jays are eighty two and sixty four. Red Sox are 83 and 65. The Yankees, 82 and 65. They're half a game back. The A's are three games back. Seattle is four games back. And a reminder the Jays have a couple of games in hand over the Red Sox, one over the Yankees. So, all of that really, Kevin, as you look at this, really suggests the Jays are in the driver's seat here. They sure are. Uh, you know. And that's what you. Be nice to win the division, but if you can't win the division, you you want to put yourself in the position I, where you're in the driver's seat for the uh, wild card. We're looking at TV right now. What's the guy's direction? George Springer. That's why I asked Ben about him. Does he see something different about him? Does he talk different? Does he act different? And he said yes, and th- this is why you brought him here. It's for situations just like this, and, you know, you, uh, sweep's too much to ask because a lot of things got to go right even against the team that's struggling the way the Twins are. But two out of three if the big boys show up, and for me it's bookend. It's Springer. And Lourdes. Yeah. We've had, uh, because we have the sort of the ISO camera at the Rogers Center here, we've been able to, frankly, watch George Springer's warm-ups. And it has been remarkable how how much better he's been moving the last, I would say, three or four. Just even, I, I know, just, just warm-up. But remember we watched the one here? He had the brace on. You could tell. Like, he did not, he barely moving. Yeah. And like, now there's more, it looks like there's more. There, there's there's more freedom there. Yeah, I know. I know he's not a big fan of, fan of the long pants. That that you know that sounds simple, sounds easy. You laugh a little bit, but it's out of his routine. Yeah, it, it makes him uncomfortable. So yeah. that's something he has to get by. I know it sounds silly, but when they're great, they're great for a reason because they're feeling right. You know, when you wear your nice pants and and your best pair of shoes, how good do you feel? I haven't done let's that go, for a while. Let's go dancing. COVID and hasn't. COVID hasn't. A hitter's no different. So you know he's getting he's getting used to that. And I, I said he he looks. You know, Not anywhere near the George Springer that he looked a long time ago. You can see he's grimacing there. He, he heard you talking. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's the starting and it's the, it's the stopping. It's the, when he takes an awkward swing, maybe over swings. Of course, if he just hits home runs, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but, you, you know, again, it's, four, it's a, four or five what, more home what, runs, a couple what, of doubles. What makes right. a great house? A great foundation. Four or five home but runs, it, a couple again, of doubles, it, I'll be happy. When you, when you know yourself, you know your swing. You tend not to go outside the, the norm. He can get a good pitch to hit. He's going to get some against this team. Oh, yeah. When you get it, don't miss it. Don't waste your bullets. Short and quick. 7.07, the first pitch tonight from the Rogers Center. The Jays' first of three against the Minnesota Twins. Tomorrow's game, 3.07, first pitch. Sunday, 107, first pitch. The roof is open at the Dome. It looks spectacular. We'll be back on Monday. You've been listening to Baseball Central, powered by DoorDash on the Sportsnet Radio Network.